Every honest Jew who knows the history of his people cannot but feel a deep sense of gratitude to Islam, which has protected the Jews for 50 generations. While the Christian world persecuted the Jews and tried many times by the sword to get them to abandon their faith. Jews were encouraged to emigrate from Europe. A letter from one rabbi to his persecuted brethren in Europe burns with fervor of a Zionist emigration prospectus, urging settlement in the promised land. Here in the land of the Turks we have nothing to complain of. We have nothing to complain of. We possess great fortunes, much gold and silver are in our hands. Much gold and silver are in our hands. We are not oppressed with heavy taxes and our commerce is free and unhindered. Rich are the fruits of the earth, everything is cheap and every one of us lives in peace and freedom. And every one of us lives in peace and freedom. Here the Jew is not compelled to wear a yellow star as a badge of shame as is the case in Germany, where even wealth and great fortune are a curse for a Jew because he therewith arouses jealousy among the Christians and they devise all kind of slander against them to rob him of his gold. Arise, my brethren, gird up your loins, collect all your forces and come to us. The author of the book, Constantinople, continues. In the refuge of the world, in contrast to Western Europe, there were no restrictions of freedom of trade and few limits on the construction of synagogues. With their newfound wealth, they were able to outbid Christian and Muslim consortiums for the lease of Constantinople's customs. Their history is that rarity in Jewish history, a happy story. In Constantinople, the words pogrom, ghetto, inquisition had no meaning. Pogrom. A pogrom is a violent riot aimed at the massacre or expulsion of an ethnic or religious group, particularly one aimed at Jews. Amnon Cohen in Jewish Life Under Islam But that in no way changes the fundamental proposition of this book. An autonomous Jewish life was carried on in Ottoman Jerusalem under the protection of, and even encouraged by, the Muslim rulers from the time they rose to power. In the last chapter titled, Conclusion, The Importance of Being Tolerated, he states, the Jews of Jerusalem enjoyed the status of a tolerated minority, that of a protected people. The Jews enjoyed social autonomy and religious freedom to an impressive extent. Impressive extent. To an impressive extent. He highlights a petition sent by a judge from Jerusalem over to Istanbul, in which the judge honored the Jews by placing the heads of the Jewish community before the Christian priests. He says, quote, more important for our purposes, however, is the insight to this petition as well as other documents gives us to the relationships and attitudes that prevailed between Muslims and Jews. He carries on. The appeal proclaimed the governor's fairness and decency to his people, his important contribution to their health, security, and prosperity, and to the well-being of the city, referring to Jerusalem. The testimony of the Jews is significant not only in that it indicates that the governor treated the Jews with consideration, but also because it reflects the relative importance attributed to them by the central government, and therefore by the provincial authorities as well. The Jews were among the weaker classes of Jerusalem's diversified social structure, classes that almost inevitably evoked scorn and discrimination. A good ruler was expected to restrain such attributes, enabling the people to benefit from the example of his tolerance. Of course, there were also bad rulers who oppressed the Jews, but even then, the Jews could register their protests in Istanbul. They could also take their grievances to the Qadi, meaning judge, in Jerusalem. As a local judge, the Qadi had independent authority. 
he had no need to curry favor with the local ruler since the appointment came directly from Istanbul. There was wisdom in the separation of administrative and legal authority in the provinces, with the Qadi, judge, responsible for maintaining the religious law. It was incumbent on the Qadi, judge, to demand that the Jews behave in accordance with Islamic law and strictly observe the regulations circumscribing the Ahl al-Dhimma. At the same time, he had to safeguard their legal, economic, and social standing against unlawful incursions and ensure that they were treated fairly. The protocols leave no doubt at all that the law court was generally concerned with the welfare of the Jews and protected them against hostile rulers as well as against local malefactors. As the court protected the rights of weak elements of society in accordance with the provisions of the Sharia, so the Jews brought to the Muslim court all those matters over which their own religious court had no authority. But the Qadi, judge, was more than a last resource for them. There were many disputes between Jew and Jew, criminal and civil cases, and even, even issues involving personal relations that the Jews brought to the Qadi, rather than the Dayan, for adjudication. Men, learned in the laws of Judaism, tried to limit the kinds of issues Jews were permitted to bring before the Muslim judge. Rabbi David ben Zimra Taradbaz, for example, stated that bills of divorcement were not to be brought to the Gentiles, nor were Jews to take an oath before them. But as we learn from the responsa literature, even this limitation was breached during his own lifetime. Essentially, an unlimited variety of issues was brought to the Muslim court by Jews was brought to the Muslim court by Jews. And neither their language nor their religion seems to have been a barrier between them and the judge. This shows that the Muslim judges were fair and unbiased with the Jews, and even though Judaism places a tremendous amount of importance in law and jurisprudence, Jews still went to the Muslim courts and voluntarily sought verdict from a Muslim judge rather than one from their own, despite attempts from learned men from their community to limit such things. This speaks volumes. Speaking of volumes, by the way, Amnon Cohen compiled a two-volume or two-part book titled A World Within, in which he collected a ton of records from the courts during the Ottoman period. Shortly after the Visigothic regime adopted Roman Catholicism in the late 6th century, Catholic clergy assembled at synods where they passed anti-Jewish legislation that made the life of Spanish Jewry intolerable. That made the life of Spanish Jewry intolerable. After a time, the government legitimized forced baptisms, creating the first cases of Anusim, namely Jews who were forced to profess Catholicism publicly while practicing Judaism in secret. Thus, when Muslims crossed the Straits of Gibraltar from North Africa in 711 CE and invaded the Iberian Peninsula, Jews welcomed them as liberators from Christian persecution. Visigoths Visigoths are early Germanic people. Synod a synod is a council of a church, usually convened to decide an issue of doctrine, administration, or application. Straits of Gibraltar, it separates the Iberian Peninsula in Europe from Morocco in Africa. Jews welcomed them as liberators from Christian persecution. Heinrich Graz. It was in these favorable circumstances the Spanish Jews came under the rule of the Mohammedans, meaning Muslims, as whose allies they esteemed themselves the equals of their co-religionists in Babylonia and Persia. They were kindly treated, obtained religious liberty, of which they had so long been deprived. 
of which they had so long been deprived, were permitted to exercise jurisdiction over their co-religionists and were only obliged, like the conquered Christians, to pay a citizenship tax.